Hi everybody, welcome to the first lecture in the series for the prescribing safety assessment. My name is Sona, I'm a junior doctor at Kingston Hospital and also an ex-pharmacist and I've essentially set up this teaching series that's going to run over roughly a period of three months to help supplement your revision for the PSA exam because I fully appreciate there's a lot of anxiety surrounding the exam and you could do with um, some more teaching so I really hope you find this useful. Those of you that are joining on to watch the recording from the webinar will notice this is not the recording from the webinar. We had quite a few technical issues and I have decided to um, record the session again because you guys gave some really lovely feedback. Thank you so much for all the feedback from the session, um, but also for the negatives. There was a unanimous vote that the, the technical issues didn't really help. We had some issues with the microphone and the blurry slides, which was largely because of the... Um, web browser we were using so we're going to use a different browser but i just think those of you that are going to come back and watch the video again i think it's only fair for me to um, re-record so that you don't have to sit through the the technical issues again and hopefully it will be a smoother session and more helpful for you guys so here we go so Today is the first lecture in the series and we will be covering the structure of the PSA exam and also timings and um, how we can use the BNF efficiently to save time in the exam. Just a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Wesley and The Next Step. Um, if you don't mind scanning the QR code, you can have a look at their website and find out what they're about. You can follow them on Instagram and also on Facebook. Um, essentially, they help to prepare you for the transition to your first foundation year and beyond with all the advice and support that you need on careers, finances and well-being. So I would recommend, highly recommend you to have a look at their, at their website. Just a quick meet the team and there will be more people joining, but for now, this is what we've got. We've got Salmia and Balamrit, who are the chair and co-chair of the Keele Medical Education Society Committee. And we've got Dr. Janice, who's the lead for the final year series. These three individuals together have done lots of work behind the scenes to help with organising this, the PSA series, but also the SJT and lots of other bits and bobs. So thank you for your help. We've got Dr. Akash, who is the founder of Mind the Bleep. And we have myself. Um, I'm the lead for prescribing for Mind the Bleep and also the, the PSA series. Quick housekeeping, the PSA assessment for Mind the Bleep has been created by junior doctors who have a passion for teaching entirely on a voluntary basis. Their aim is to teach from experience and to help ease the anxieties around the exam. The lecture slides and the teaching content are accurate to the best of our knowledge. Please, please note, we've done our best to make sure there aren't any inaccuracies, but we don't take any responsibility for any unintentional inaccuracies. If there is anything, please highlight it to us and we will make sure we rectify everything. You can refer to the full T's and C's here. Just some provisional dates and content. I won't read everything out to you. You can have a look at this in your own time, but essentially we're going to run the series over a period of roughly three months, roughly one lecture a week. Over Christmas, we're not going to do as much. Um, and essentially I've taken the blueprint which you can find on the PSA website and I've tried to cover as much of it as, as possible. We've got elderly care and pediatrics we're going to cover next week. Um, the week after that we've got adverse drug reactions and so on and so forth. Um, this is the next set so session six onwards. You can have a look at what we're going to cover and session 11 essentially we're going to have as a um, Q&A so that if there's anything that comes up, anything you want to email us with questions, we can put them all together, group them all together and then answer any questions at the end. Hopefully this will be helpful because it will be close to the exam. This is the PSA blueprint I was talking about. I'd highly recommend you having a look at this document on the PSA website. There's lots of information as well as this, this blueprint. So you can see here, we've got prescribing, prescription review, planning management, all of these columns I've tried to separate into roughly one week at a time um, and go into whatever they've recommended in, in detail. So I've tried to cover as much as, as I can um, in, the, in the lecture series. So hopefully this will definitely help supplement your your revision. 
In terms of the PSA structure, there's eight sections in the exam, 60 items in total. You've got 120 minutes and 200 marks. And you can see the, the eight sections outlined here. And also there's an overarching themes for medicine, surgery, elderly, pediatrics, psychiatry, obs and gynae, and GP. So this is everything that the exam will, will encounter. So we have got a breakdown, a bit more of a breakdown, and I just want to put your focus on the first section, which is the prescribing section. This is eight items, but 10 marks for each item. So that's a total of 80 marks. That's essentially almost half the paper. So you could look at the exam and say, okay, so it's 60 items, 120 minutes, that's two minutes per item, but I wouldn't recommend you to do it like that. I would actually recommend you spend roughly, roughly 50 minutes, give or take a few minutes um, on this first section, because it requires, if you don't know exactly what you need to prescribe for the section, then you need to address the BNF and that can take a bit of time. But if you do it well, then you'll get the marks and that's that's quite a big chunk that you've you've achieved out of the exam. So I'd highly recommend you spending 50 minutes roughly on this section you can have a look at the 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 marks for the rest of the section and i've just given you a rough guide of how much to spend how long to spend on each on each section um it's entirely up to you on, on what you do but i would spend longer on the sections that are worth more marks i'd also highly recommend that you do the papers on the on the PSA website, there's there's quite a few papers, and when you do them, you then get a you then get feedback at the end, and you can see where you've lost marks on. You can see also that there's not always just one answer that's correct. Sometimes you can prescribe things different strengths, different volumes, and you'll still get the mark. So it's a bit reassuring that it's not just you know you put one thing and that's the only thing that you can get correct. So have a look, and it gives you an idea of of where you're where you're going wrong and how how you can improve. So highly would highly recommend you do the past papers and do them multiple times and do them timed as well because it's it's very different when you do it in a time setting than when you just just do it leisurely. So the first section is on prescribing. This is the eighty marks in total, so ten marks each, eight different questions. The main focus on this is that you're safe and effective in your prescribing. So you're provided with a scenario and then asked to prescribe an appropriate medicine or IV fluid. There's five marks for the drug choice and five marks for getting the dose, route, and frequency correct. So in this example, for example, um, we have got a chap who presents with shortness of breath and edema for one week. Um, he's got a background of quite a few medical conditions and he's on a cocktail of quite a few medicines which I'll, I'll let you read through yourself in, in your own time but essentially if you jot down the important things the examinations that are outliers the things that aren't normal the investigations that are abnormal so here you can see for example the potassium is slightly out of range you can see that the chest x-ray showed cardiomegaly and palm edema and the question is asking you to prescribe one drug that is most appropriate to alleviate the breathlessness and edema so the thing that they want you here is to prescribe furosemide. This patient essentially has issues with their heart, which is causing congestion in their lungs, fluid buildup, um, and also in their periphery. So furosemide is the drug of choice to help essentially offload the fluid. So one thing I want to point out here, um, and also just to point out in the feedback, it a lot of people wanted more more questions. This is just this is more for you to understand the 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 structure of the exam in the individual lectures we'll be going through more question examples so please don't worry but this isn't more this is less to do with the questions and more to do with the sort of the structure and how to approach them so for example if we go with furosemide um bear in mind and please be really mindful that there's lots of different forms that drop down when you start typing the word furosemide and you need to make sure because you want this to be act acting quickly they want you to prescribe the the iv injection so you need to make sure that you choose the correct form because i tried this just to see what would happen and essentially if you for example prescribe furosemide tablets and you give and then you choose the root iv even though the root is correct and the drug is correct because you've chosen the the incorrect form 
you only get five marks for knowing to give furosemide. You won't get the other five marks because you can't give a tablet IV. You can't give an oral solution IV. And in fact, that would be quite dangerous. So um, be careful that you've selected, take a bit more time and make sure you've selected the correct form. Sometimes if you've got a scroll on your mouse, you might accidentally scroll and change the drug form. So before you move on, check that you're happy with your prescription. One other thing just to point out in regards to if you're prescribing IV fluids, you need to um, just, just be aware that IV potassium comes in a pre-made bag of, for example, sodium chloride, and you can either have 20 millimoles of potassium in a bag or 40 millimoles of potassium in a bag. Now, in the exam, it doesn't say 20 or 40 millimoles. In the exam, 0.15% correlates to 20 millimoles and 0.3% correlates to zero, the 40 millimoles. So please be mindful of this because um, it did catch a few people out initially because, you know, everyone was looking for 20 millimoles and 40 millimoles. And in fact, you want, it's the 0.15 and the 0.3% that you're looking for. So 0.15 is 20 millimoles, 0.3 is 40 millimoles. Um, the next section is prescription review. So you essentially have to review a list of medicines and there's roughly six to 10 in total per question. And there's, so there's 32 marks in total, four marks per question. And you essentially have to identify inappropriate, unsafe or ineffective prescriptions. And this could be ineffective doses, inappropriate drugs or routes um, based on the clinical circumstances that they've given you in the case presentation. You could have, there could be issues of renal impairment, low BP, electrolyte disturbances, drug interactions, and so on and so forth. So a lot of this is assumed knowledge. So a lot of things that you come across as a medical student in the hospitals, you, you'll pick up on lots of common things, but also if there's things that you're not aware of or, or you're unsure of, then you need to consult the, the BNF as well. Bear in mind, there's two sections. There's question A and question B. So question A, you're choosing, for example, this set instance, it asks for one prescription that contains a serious dosing error. Question B asks for three things. So make sure you know how many things that they want, because if you don't tick all three, then you won't necessarily get the marks. And it's just, it's a shame to miss out on the marks. If you're not sure, then answer something because there's no negative marking. So it's always best for you to, to take a educated guess and, and tick something rather than nothing. So planning on management is the next section of the exam. Um, this is to do with choosing the most appropriate treatment option for a particular clinical scenario. And um, this is 16 marks in total, two marks per question. So normally the diagnosis and the differential diagnosis should be clear from the scenario, but it may not necessarily be identified. So they may not necessarily say, this is what the person has wrong with them. Um, it could be they're just short of breath, it could be they've got abdo pain, or they've got a decreased GCS. So, um, but it should be fairly easy to, to figure out. They shouldn't give you anything too difficult that you're not really sure what's what's going on. So, um, and you basically need to select the most appropriate management option. So it says most appropriate because all of them could be appropriate. Some of them could be appropriate, but it's the most appropriate for that scenario. So do bear that in mind. And also, Bear in mind the role of non-drug therapies, because sometimes you might re refer somebody to the physiotherapist or the occupational therapist because they're not coping well at home and they need some adjustments in their in their house setting. And actually, you don't need to add in any drugs and also other non-drug therapies such as TENS machines. So just bear that in mind. It might not necessarily be just drugs that they're, they're asking for. So have a look at all the options and choose what's the most appropriate. Next section is providing information. This is essentially about the most important things that you want your patients or the carers or the healthcare professionals to know. This is 12 marks in total and you have two marks per question. And essentially you've got a case presentation and then you've got some options to choose from. So in this instance, the patient's been started on surgery and it's asked for what's the most important thing that should be provided to the patient and his wife. So. One thing I'll say is don't rush to answer a question because, for example, you may spot that here, the dose of sertraline can be increased if necessary after several weeks. Yes, that's correct. And you may 
brush and answer this question and move on because you've seen that that's correct. However, actually, all of the options could be correct. It's asking for the most important. So um, withdrawal symptoms do occur if some if it stopped abruptly. Um, you may get some nausea during during initiation of sertraline. These things are relevant. However, the most important thing because the patient's just been started on the sertraline is to convey that suicidal ideation may worsen in the first four weeks after stopping the surgery after starting the sertraline. So that's the most important thing because it, it could cause harm if they don't know this. It's something that they need to look out for and, and, and be aware of. The other things can be dealt with later. And in fact, for example, the dose of sertraline being increased may not even need to be increased if the patient is, is well controlled and, and happy on the current dose. So this is something that's the thing that you need to convey. The most important thing is to do with the patient's safety and actually about the suicidal ideation. So just bear, bear that in mind that all the answers may be correct. You're trying to choose the most important and the most the safe thing that you want to convey to the, the patient. Next, we've got calculation skills. So 16 marks in total and two marks per, per calculation. What I'd recommend here, um, as, as it is only two marks, I say only two marks, but it still counts. But if you're struggling with a particular calculation, then then move on and come back to it, because sometimes you can end up spending so long on it and, and then you take away from the rest of the exam. So if you're struggling, leave it, mark it for review and then come back, come back to it. And you can see here, you literally just click mark for review and then um, you can come back to it later. Some things to bear in mind is you may need to address the um, body surface area chart in the in the BNF in the BNFC, which I'll show you where to find. Some of the drugs are based on um, the dosings are based on body surface area, so it's something to bear in mind and know where to find. You may have to do some drug dilutions, some infusion pumps, and definitely you need to get good at converting between units. So we will have a whole session on on calculating and the different things that you know, you may be asked and the different things that you should really know as, as a junior doctor when, you, when you're starting out. So don't worry about that. We, we're going to cover that and cover this in a whole other section. Adverse drug reactions. Again, we've got 16 marks, two marks in total. This is slightly different, this question, because there's, there's four different types of questions they can ask within these adverse drug reaction questions. So essentially, the importance of this is to spot adverse drug reactions, um, spot drugs that you may need to discontinue to avoid potential drug interactions. And also you may be asked, somebody's had a drug adverse drug reaction, how do you manage the, the, the consequences? So um, read the question carefully, see what they want. In this instance, um, this is this would be a, a type A question where you've got a, a patient's been started on a drug and the question is asking, what is the side effect of, of this drug? So that's a type A. Type B question is you may have a cocktail of drugs and they may ask um, which one has contributed to, for example, uh, renal impairment, hepatic impairment, electrolyte disturbances. A type C question is to do with drug interactions and we'll show you how to look for drug interactions quickly and efficiently if you're not sure of what the interactions are. And then a type D question is you've got an adverse drug reaction, how are you going to deal with it? So it could be, for example, um, anaphylaxis, for example, for example, or or somebody's been excessively anticoagulated and they may be bleeding, how to reverse that. And again, we'll go through all this in our separate sessions. Next session we've got is drug monitoring. So this is 16 marks and two marks per question. You will again have a case presentation and then a question. And this is essentially about monitoring the beneficial and harmful effects of medication and assessing how successful or unsuccessful the therapies are. In this scenario, and you'll notice again, this is about heart failure and furosemide. We've got a patient who's been admitted to the ED with shortness of breath and pitting pedal edema. They've got congestive heart failure. They're on a cocktail of medication and they've been started on furosemide, 40 milligrams IV twice daily. And this question is asking about the most appropriate option to monitor for the beneficial effects of this prescription after two days treatment. So, um, Again, it's asking for the most important, most appropriate option. Furosemide can have an effect on blood pressure. It can have an effect on ejection fraction. It can have an effect on all of these things. However, it's asking about the most appropriate option for monitoring. 
you wouldn't really monitor ejection fraction daily because you'd have to be scanning the heart every day, which wouldn't be appropriate, for example. Um, the thing that they want here, and you learn this largely on, um, if you've been on a cardiology ward, for example, is that they want you, they monitor weight a lot. So they do daily weights. They ask the nurses to kindly weigh patients daily. And they're looking for a reduction of roughly 0 0.5 kilograms a day. And that's not their physical weight, their fat or anything. It's, it's essentially the water that they're losing. And that's a way to... Um, monitor how well the, the medication is working. If they're not losing enough, they'll need to increase the dose, for example. So so read the question paper quite carefully, read all the options and make make a, a guess based on, make your answer based on the most appropriate option, not necessarily what the drug does and what you can monitor, because on this instance, you can actually monitor all of these things, but the most appropriate would be weight. Other things could be, for example, blood sample timing. So digoxin, you take a, a sample of the drug six hours after you give the dose, and then you'll have a range to compare to. And then depending on how high or low it is, um, you will act accordingly. Or you might need to, for example, monitor adverse effects of carbimazole. Carbimazole can cause agranulocytosis where your white cell counts essentially drop. Um, so you'll be looking to monitor the full blood count in this instance. So there's lots of things that they could ask in this section. Um, read the questions carefully and then answer appropriately. Next section is data interpretation. So this is 12 marks and you have two marks per question. This is essentially about interpreting the meaning of results and making appropriate changes to prescriptions as a result. You may need to withdraw medicines, you may need to reduce doses, increase doses, and sometimes it's even okay to continue the current regime. Some of the things that you'll come across is drug, rev, drug level monitoring, full blood count, HP, renal, liver impairment. We'll be going through these sections, as I say, um, in more depth, throughout the course of the lecture series. So don't worry too much um, if you're not sort of too sure about these, these questions, but essentially you'll have a case presentation, jot down the things that stand out, read the question, um, and then make an educated answer after you've consulted the, the BNF. There's lots of sections in the, the, the BNF about monitoring and um, about the individual drugs that we will go through so that you know where, where to look for for certain things but just bear in mind you don't always have to change a, a treatment course you it, it, sometimes it's actually okay to just carry on with the same regime same dose so um you just need to find the information in the bnf and then action accordingly at the end of your exam you will have a, a summary slide and i just want to draw your attention to this not answered section so at the bottom this is only 30 questions 30 because it's the sample paper you will have um 60 in the exam so have a look down here and make sure this isn't zero if you've accidentally not answered a question please go back and answer it because there's no negative marking so i'd highly recommend to, to answer every single question. I mentioned to you before about marking questions for review. You can see here, question two, question seven, question 28, there are some orange lines. Um, this is a question that's been marked for review. So in your summary, you, if you marked some for review, you can go back to those quickly and, and answer them by, by um, having a look at this, this screen and, and seeing which ones are have these orange triangles. And then you can essentially exit the assessment. So Please, please make sure you've answered all the questions. If you haven't, go back and take an educated guess because there's no negative marking. Just a quick thing about the exam platform. So at the top of your screen, you should see this. And essentially you've got, from going from left to right, you've got this A and this stands for abbreviations. In the exam stem, the, the question for the case presentation, if you're not sure about an abbreviation that's used, it will be, it should be in here. So if you click on it, it will come up with a big list of abbreviations and you can find what you're what you're looking for. So make sure if there's something you're not sure in the question, an abbreviation, then use this button. The book will come to in a minute. The calculator is, is fairly self-explanatory. And then you've got these three lines. So at any time during your exam, you can click on these three lines and it brings up your assessment dashboard, um, which shows you where you are in the exam so i stopped at question 28 when i did this so and 
This is why the current question here is blue. So wherever you are will be blue. You can see how many questions or what questions you've marked for review and what questions you have and haven't answered. If you, for example, get to question 12 and you think, oh, I remember the answer to question seven, you can just click on this, quickly answer question seven and move on. Or you can do it at the end. It's entirely up to you, but you have this option available. And then, as I said, you've got this mark for review button, which you can mark your question for review, and then it will appear as an orange line, and then you can go back and reattempt the question. So if we now focus on this book, so when you click on this book, it will open up, give you some options for the Medicine to Complete BNF and BNFC, or for the NICE BNF and BNFC. So from my experience, I would, and this is just completely a personal choice, um, I don't want, you know, I haven't been paid to promote either or. This is entirely my own choice and I'm going to advise you and and use for this lecture the Medicines Complete BNF when I'm teaching. Um, but please go to both of them and see which one you like the most. I personally think Medicines Complete has a better layout um, and is more efficient, which will be really helpful in your exam. But other people might prefer NICE. So this is my personal preference, use Medicines Complete. So let's, here are some reasons why I think it's better. But as I say, please make your own mind up. So I'm going to now switch to the, the online BNF. Um, this one is the NICE one and we've got the medicines complete one so if i just show you the home page of the nice bnf you've got um this is what you'll have when when the screen open, op opens up for you so you've got your drugs you've got your treatment summaries interactions you've got your medicines guidance wound management all of these things you can see here all right if we open the medicines complete and we just go to the home page this is what you'll see so these are all the same headings, exactly the same headings as this. There won't be anything different. There shouldn't be anything different. Um, but you can see it's a lot more concise. So if we start, for example, let's just um, look at the drugs. This is the drugs for Medicines Complete. And here are the drugs for the NICE BNF. So say if we just click on A and we click on this, for example, just as an example. It will bring you A, all the drugs that begin with A. If you click on, for example, P, we want paracetamol, we want to find, for example, or we want to find any other drugs that begin with P. To go back to that first menu, you have to scroll all the way back up to the top. You can use the back button, but that gives me a bit of anxiety. I wouldn't recommend using it in the exam entirely up to you, but um, I wouldn't. I don't like pressing the back button. And then you have to then say you want to find a drug with Y. Takes you all the way there. Then you have to scroll all the way back up to find the the menu, which you can see takes a bit of time. You can also search for the drug name, but if you're not actually sure what or the spelling, then you you have to search for it in this way. If we look at the Medicines Complete version, say P for paracetamol, it's just got the list of the drugs that begin with that name. Um, then you've got G, and then you you can quickly find V. So you're not having to scroll. See, for, for the Y, the yellow fever, you're not having to scroll all the way back up. You have all the list here. So that's, I think, one, one efficient thing with the Medicines Complete. Um, Compared to the compared to the nice. Now, if we just, for example, go on, I just want to show you something with the paracetamol. Just be very careful when you are on the drug monograph that you pay attention to the roots and the indications because there's different roots, different doses for different indications. So here, if we, they've got the children's one as well. We've got pain and pyrexia, and then we've got post immunization pyrexia, which is a different dose. So if the child's had a uh, vaccine and they're asking for how you can manage the, the pyrexia, they would want you to go for this section because it's a post immunization pyrexia rather than this pyrexia, if that makes sense. So please make sure you, um, you choose the right indication, the right dose and the right route. 
Um, because in an exam setting, when you're a little bit stressed and you're trying to do something quickly, you might just look at the first thing on the list and prescribe it. So, so just pay attention to that. Another thing I wanted you to um, also be aware of, if you have a look here for the monograph, we've got paracetamol here. Um, let's just find paracetamol with a nice one, nice BNF. Here we go. You've got the individual parts of the monograph here. So if you want to find medicine, medicinal forms, you click on medicinal forms, it takes you right to it. Then you go, you have to scroll back up, to then find indication and dose or say hepatic impairment, great, takes you to it. But then you have to scroll all the way back up to um, find the navigation panel again. If you have a look at the medicines complete one, the panel is on the side. So you can quickly switch between sections without having to scroll all the way up. If that, I hope that makes sense. So this is another reason why I prefer to use the medicines complete because it's a lot more quick in my opinion. You can find sections very quickly. Um, one thing I wanted to draw your attention to, and now I will focus mainly on this Medicines Complete version, is the monitoring section. So say if we go on to azathioprine, because I know it needs monitoring. Here is the drug. And if we go on to monitoring, you can see here all the things that you need to monitor when starting the azathioprine. So it says monitor for toxicity throughout treatment, um, monitor for blood count weekly, blood tests and monitoring for myelosuppression, lots of things like that. So anything that you need to monitor will be, will be listed here, um, which would be very helpful for some of the, the questions in the, in the exam. Also talks about these thiopurine levels. Um, and some pre-treatment screening. So the, these these are things that may come up and it's really good for you to know where you can find these. So if something needs monitoring or a question asks about monitoring, you go onto the drug monograph, you scroll down, you click on monitoring. And if something is needed, then it will be here. Another thing to point out, say if we search for alendronic acid, We've got this directions for administration section. So anything, any medication that have specific directions for administration, the directions will be listed here. So in this search bar here in this section, you just click on directions for administration and here we are. So for alendronic acid in particular, um, you need to drink the medication with plenty of water while sitting or standing on an empty stomach, stomach at least 30 minutes before breakfast or any other oral medicines. Um, the patient should stand or sit upright for at least 30 minutes after administration. So it's 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 worth knowing where to find these because if there are specific information, then um, this, is, this is where it will be. So for the di directions for administration section. Another thing I wanted to point out to you, let's search for clobetazone. So steroid creams, things like this, um, if you go on for directions for administration, you will see here that it talks about fingertip units. So this is quite niche. And if you don't know where to find it or how to find it, then you'd struggle. But this is where you find it. So for for steroid creams, because they can be quite potent and you, you, you don't want to use them sparingly, it explains about a fingertip unit, which is the index finger up until the first crease. So that might be some counselling that might need to be given and how much to use. This is where you'd find it. Another thing I wanted to point out is the cautionary and advisory labels. So you can find them in this section. So if I just show you how to get back again. So this is the home page. Click on cautionary advisory labels. If you're interested on in what they were, there's 32 in total. Um, and there's things so you can see here, it might say do not take indigestion remedies a certain time before and after you take the tablet, um, do not drink alcohol, do not operate heavy machinery, this medicine may make you sleepy. So individual drugs have their own warning labels. So if you're interested, you can find them all here. Or for example, let's search for isosorbide mononitrate. 
To find the warning labels for the specific medication, you need to go on the drug monograph and then you scroll down and you click on medicinal forms. And this will bring you to the form. So it shows you it comes as a tablet, a modified release tablet and a modified release capsule. So if we click here, before it shows you the different strengths of the, the formulations, you will see the cautionary advisory labels. This one just has one. It says, swallow this medicine whole, do not crush or chew. Um, some medication may have seven. Uh, some might have three, some might not have any. So if you need to find what the cautionary and advisory labels are, then that's how we find it. So we, we search for the drug, we go on the monograph of the drug, we scroll down to medicinal forms, and then you click on the individual form, and then it will tell you before it lists the different strengths of the medication, it will tell you what the cautionary and advisory labels are. So another thing I wanted to show you was how to search for drug interactions, um, which will be really, really helpful in the exam and also when you're when you're working. The, the BNF app, you can search for interactions quickly on that. But in the exam, what you can do is you type in interactions. Down this left hand side, you click on interactions and then. When you're presented with a list of medication to see what interacts and you're not sure what interacts with what, you essentially all you have to do is type all the medication in and you can either choose it from the scroll down or if you can spell it properly, um, you can just spell it straight away. Uh, let's just make some up. Um, for example, then you press search. And um, before we just go further, let me just show you if we if we look at interactions on the, on the nice BNF and if anybody's found a way, please let me know if you're really interesting. But I haven't yet. You have to find the drug and then scroll down the list here and then find the interact the drug that you want to see whether it interacts with here um, down this long list or you can type it in. But you can see if you've got lots of medication in this instance, we've just looked at seven combinations. It's actually much quicker to use Medicines Complete because it will put all the combination of medications together um, and tell you whether there's interactions or not. One thing to look out for, you can see here, ibuprofen methotrexate says severe. Um, here it doesn't say severe as much. And then here again, it says severe. So you need to be mindful with the interactions because lots of medication interact with each other. So for example, if we were to type in Ramipril and Ablodipine, let's do that now. Oh no, let's not, oh, here we go. Ramipril and Ablodipine. It does come up with an interaction and it says both Ramipril and Ablodipine can increase the risk of hypotension. So that is an interaction, but that's, that's something that we want to happen. Um, we, we are adding using the two drugs together to, to have an added effect to bring down blood pressure because one isn't enough. So, so you need to be um, mindful of those and pick out the interactions that are relevant. Um, so in the exam setting, if there was lots of answers with the interactions, then you're looking for the ones that are severe. Um, those are the dangerous ones. Uh, so so you, you have to be a bit mindful of the fact that there will be lots of interactions, but over time, you'll learn to know which are the significant ones. But for, for the sake of now um, and, and going forward, the severe ones are the ones that you need to pay attention to first. And then you can have a look at have a look at all the other ones. Make sure you look at all the all the interactions, because some of them, you know, you may want the added effect, but other times you may not. So make sure you pay attention to all of it. But if there's lots of options, then it's the severe ones that that you're that you're looking for. So I hope that's that's helpful. Another thing, so if we just scroll down, click here, another thing to look out for is um, guidance. This, there's a wealth of knowledge here. Um, I would recommend you to have a look at every single section just so you know what it encompasses and what information that you can find from each section um, so that in the exam, you know exactly where to go. One thing I want to just point out here, prescribing a renal impairment, this is a really, really good um, summary about renal impairment, what happens during an acute kidney injury, what you need to do, what you need to look out for. You have here um, the, let's have a look, you've got the Cockroft and Galt equation, so you don't have to remember off the top of your head. Um, patients with 
extremes of body weight for example sometimes also like really elderly patients as well or patients who are really underweight or, or muscly or overweight um they prefer you to use the creatinine clearance rather than the estimated gfr so um have a look at this section there's quite a lot to go through so i won't go through it all now but do have a look um uh, i think you'll find it useful and also you can find the formula here as well Another bit in the guidance that I want to, to draw your attention to is prescribing in, in palliative care. There's so much information here, really, really useful stuff about um, if patients are in pain, um, neuropathic pain, you can see here um, cramps, abdominal cramps, if they're having lots of secretions, constipations, convulsions, shortness of breath hiccups even. There's lots of things in this section. The thing I want to point out to you is if you have a look, a really have a good read of the pain management, um, it talks about how to um, calculate what dose to use, how to calculate breakthrough pain. Um, and also, for example, you've got these wonderful tables here that help you convert between different opioids so codeine oral by mouth 100 milligrams for example is equivalent to 100 milligrams of dihydrocodeine but but uh, but 10 milligrams morphine and if you're giving it iv or im or subcut then 100 milligrams codeine is equivalent to five milligrams of im morphine so in your calculation section you may find this helpful uh there's also a section here about um converting between morphine a total daily dose of morphine to a patch, so a buprenorphine patch or to a fentanyl patch. So um, really quick and easy to find if you know where you're looking. So this, this is in the prescribing and palliative care section, and I'd highly recommend you you have a have a look at that. So if we just go back to the PowerPoint, um, this is just the summary of the tables, but please have a look at the actual section in the BNF. Another thing I really wanted to pay attention to is this treatment summaries so um they are really really helpful especially for the prescribing section of the exam when if you're if you know what you're prescribing so the prescribing section is the first section worth 80 marks if you know what you're prescribing fantastic go ahead and prescribe the medication if you're not sure then these treatment summaries are fantastic so uh some of the members of mind the bleep have made a fantastic document about the psa exam and also um what to type in what to search for to bring back certain bring up certain treatment summaries so have a look at those um because the, the way you there's certain ways to word things to bring things up but for my advice as well if you're really really not sure um if the question is asking about if it's something to do with the eye even if you type the word eye in and you find the treatment summaries it will give you some good guidance about kind of what you're what you're looking for or mouth or if the question is about someone's got earache type in the word ear or if they're having urinary symptoms type in the word urinary i'll show you in a second so firstly i just wanted to show you um antibacterials for for prophylaxis so if you literally just type this in you on this left hand side click on treatment summary this time um and if you just have a look there's there's some niche things here that might be helpful for you to have a look at um things to prescribe before surgery um in h hemophilus influenza infection diphtheria um lots of lots of weird and wonderful things um see orthopedic surgery antibacterial prophylaxis have a look at these um so so you know where to find things because these are quite niche but but um but relevant to i think very relevant to also when you're working um another thing if we go back to the home we go back to here if we now look just for antibacterials so as i was saying if you're not sure what what the question's asking if you just type in antibacterials there's lots of things here, nose infections, um, GI, skin infections, oral pharyngeal, ear infections, blood infections, cardiovascular, eye infections. So genital system infections. Just, just type in antibacterial. If you think that the question is, if you think that you need to give an antibiotic, but you're not sure exactly what or, or what for, just click this, type in antibacterial. And then there's lots of things that will, will guide you. And this is what you'll be doing in real life as well. You know, you can to, to find information. So type in antibacterial and then there's lots of things here as well. 
The only other thing I wanted to, to point out as well to you guys is when you're searching for things like electrolyte disturbances, because there are treatment summaries for those, make sure you're spelling with an A and an E. If you search with just the E, so hyperkalemia without the A, it won't bring anything back. And, and in the exam, you might get a little bit stressed. So um, use the A and E spelling and you should be you should be okay. Really quickly, topical corticosteroids, if you type this into the search bar, click on treatment summaries, this, you'll come up with this. Something worth knowing. Um, so there's different tube sizes that you would give for uh, different areas and the, the size that you're trying to cover. Uh, so just have a look. Again, it's just knowing where to find things. If you type in glucocorticoid and mineralocorticoid activity, can't say that word, then you come up this, with this table um, in the treatment summary. And it's just explaining that prednisolone five milligrams is equivalent to methylpred four milligrams and so on and so forth. Again, a really useful table if you know where to find it. This is the very best slide. Just want to highlight here, um, whether you're using a Mac or, or a Windows, use Control F and Command F, because um, if you're looking for an adverse effect of a drug, for example, if you want to know if something causes hypotension, go onto the drug, type it, Control F, the word hypotension, and if it does cause it, it will come up with, with your search, or Control F, electrolyte disturbances, things like that. Have a look. Have a look through the list of adverse reactions and how certain things are phrased. So, for example, it might not say hyperkalemia, it might just say electrolyte disturbances. So have, have a look so you know, um, you know what you're looking for. One other thing I'll mention as well is missed pill rules. There are there is a treatment summary for contraception. Um, however, it directs you, from my understanding, it directs you to the NICKA website, which is really fantastic and helpful on, on missed doses, but you can't use that in the exam. So for missed pills in particular, go onto the individual pill and then search missed doses. Um, and you will find that, find it there because um you might again get a bit stressed in the exam and, and struggle finding the, the missed pill rules have a read through, um, do a little bit of sort of navigating yourself in the BNF and you'll be absolutely fine. In regards to the BNFC, um, I'm not really going to cover that much today because the layout is essentially the same. You've just got an extra table here about body surface area. Um, and also I'd, I'd recommend for you to have a look at prescribing in, um, in renal impairment as well, because there's some other formulas to use for, for children. Next week, we have a session on pediatrics and elderly care. So the, the team will go through that in more detail for you. Um, we've got Dr. Janice and a colleague of mine called Aisha, who is an F2 doctor and also an ex-pharmacist like myself, who will be leading that session. So I'm sure you'll find that really, really helpful. The week after, we've got a session on drug adverse drug reactions. Um, and you can find the rest of the, the, the schedule at the beginning of this of, of the lecture. Feedback, um, those of you who are viewing the, the lecture that are new to the lecture, please, please, could you fill out this, this feedback? If you scan the QR code, it's a very quick, quick feedback. Um, what went well, what didn't go so well. And at the end of the, the, the feedback, you once you submit it, you will be given a certificate for your attendance. So it's really helpful for us. And I hope you can see that because I've re-recorded the session, we do take your feedback on board. So please, please fill out the feedback. You'll get a certificate. And then um, if there's anything we need to improve or work on, then we can we can do that for the next sessions. These are just some some references that I used, the example questions were all from the PSA website. So you'll come across them when you do your when you do your revision. Okay, really hope you found this useful. Um, sign up to the next session. We're also doing some SJT sessions. So um, have a look at when they are the first one is next week. Um, have a look at when they are and um, make sure you join on. I'm sure you will find them very helpful. Thank you for listening, guys.